Welcome back, family. Hope you guys are doing great. I know that a lot of you, like me, have probably started seeing and sharing the funny memes going around about the Indian moon landing due to how fake it was. Because if you're like me, you probably went and tried to find their images of Earth along the way to see how bogus they were and found things like this, where they had this uh, version of the moon that looks like it's straight out of a Nintendo 64 with just a sliver of Earth showing, and that was the best they could do, going allegedly 250,000 miles away from Earth, and this is all they have. They never turned a camera around. They waited until they got here, and then they turned them on, probably to save battery. Who knows? But those are the types of things you find when you search, and of course they were in a race with Russia, because Russia wanted the street cred. If they beat India, we would just have so much more respect for them, and so they were also on their way with their tinfoil contraption. I don't know what this gold acts as or how it's going to protect these curtain rods, but it's essential, just like it was with our moon mission named after false gods as well. But at least Russia has shown us pictures of Earth. Here they are. This is Earth right here, by the way, if you didn't know. It just happens to look like someone's cell phone light in a dark room, which Actually, maybe what it is. I, I feel like they have just gotten so careless with deceiving us that they don't really try. Like, they just take out a camera that they brought with them from the 1930s and take these pictures and blame it on exposure or whatever. I don't know. That's definitely not what we live on, that little light right there. But as ridiculous as these things seem, all of these memes that seem to just write themselves with these people putting out this bogus nonsense, there is a darker side to all of this, and it goes back to something I came across when I was looking for their proofs that they went there, knowing that they didn't actually go. And you see things like this. Children. Precious, innocent, little children being deceived and praying to a false god, showing their pride, praying that this lunar lander that is named after one of their false gods, will actually land on the moon. And so they have them in unison praying. And the crazy thing is, we're not allowed to have prayer in our schools. That You wouldn't see this in America. They wouldn't have children praying because most of the children here would be trying to pray to the one true God, and they don't allow that here in America. But these little precious children being deceived not only about who they are, what they live on, but who to pray to, so many different deceptions in one photo, and kind of brings things back to uh, take away from the laughing matter, even though it is funny, the things they're doing. These children, like we were, are deceived. And there are grown adults who, in many ways, like these children, are falling for the same things that we fell for. We were all under this grand illusion at some point, and the father has swoop down to wake us up through his guidance and humbling us enough to look into this and not be cheering right along with them because some of us still would be or most of us if not all of us still would be had we not been so blessed to see what we've seen it took a lot to undo the indoctrination that we were under but these precious little children being deceived by powers of darkness but to get back to these precious children and talk about what it is that these missions are doing. It's all to bring glory to their false gods. And the way they do that, they named their lunar lander, just like we named our lunar landers and things after false gods. You know, you have the Apollo astronauts and the Apollo missions giving glory to the sun god from way back when. They do this with their lunar lander that is named Vikram. And for those of you who don't know what that name means, when you look it up, it's derived from Vishnu, which Vishnu, go to Wikipedia and find out who that is. It is their triple deity, okay? A lot like the Roman version of our Messiah that they made. They have their trinity. And so this stuff goes way back. Before Yeshua, they had the Babylonian trinities and things like that, the Egyptian trinities, and that's why they're corrupting his image. That's why you see all these paintings with his hand symbols being in weird places and him having three heads, three faces, and all of that. 
It's all a demonic deception. Like the word mentions, the spirit of the Antichrist is at work here. It is essentially to deny the Father and the Son. And so you have that going on here. Lots of different things. It seems like just cartoon animations. It's harmless. But it's not harmless. It's it's literally bringing a generation of children. And India has a massive population. It's not just some small little country. They have, I forget how many people they have in their country. It's a lot. They've got a massive population. And so that generation of children growing up deceived, it's a big deal. So we need to be praying for them, finding ways to target them with truth and with guidance that will guide them away from their deceptions. If there's people that are bilingual, can speak the language and jump onto their discussion posts and groups and help wake them up, please do that. If you want to ever translate anything we have into that language, feel free, use it free of charge, make money from it. I don't care. You know, send it, send it over there. Uh, we would love to help wake those children up just like the ones over here. This is a worldwide mission. You know, the word says it's not until the gospel of the kingdom reaches every single nation that the end will come. And so we still need to be preaching just like back then. There's a lot of work that has to be done and online work makes it easy. I feel like we're kind of limited to these days of online uh, abilities to reach people due to how much we're reaching people. And so who knows how long we have here but uh, use it while we can. I know it's a, a tool that the enemy uses, and it's one that we're using as well because it has brought so many people closer to the Most High. But I want to read a verse here. I've read it before many times. But something else that I have seen in this verse I want to bring to light because it's something that I feel like is important because it's that famous verse that says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then it tells us we need to have on the whole armor of God. And so that verse, that famous verse, when you break it down, those powers of darkness, it calls them cosmic powers. Well, I thought that's interesting. You hear that word cosmic all the time. And so I was like, what does that mean? And I looked at it. And it calls it a ruler of this world, of course, that is of the world as asserting its independence of God, used of the angelic or demonic powers, controlling the sublunary world. And I thought, there's another word I need to look up. I've got to increase my vocabulary here. There's so many big words. And that sublunary world is called the region of the geocentric cosmos below the moon consisting of the four classical elements, earth, water, air, and fire. But it's the geocentric cosmos below the moon, a.k.a. below where the firmament is. They can't get past it. That's why it's below the moon. And so even these words here tell us the domain that these evil ones have from the moon down, these powers of darkness that we're up against. That's why they focus on the moon and getting there and trying to go there. They can't go there, but they're going to pretend they can because they rule the space below the moon. They're never going to go to Mars. They're never going to go beyond the moon. They're never going to go beyond the firmament. And so they send us bogus proofs and things like that, constantly targeting our children. And as most of you have seen by now, We've been wanting to create something for this generation of youth and some of you adults who are wanting to take classes and educate yourself about the world we live in and intelligent design. We're starting to really get things moving with that. I haven't created lessons for the earth science class yet. I have some that I have lined up for the life science and have put some out there. And we're offering some sample courses that are free just to sample and demonstrate what next year is going to be like when we're hopefully able to do this full time. Not really sure if that'll happen, but that's my goal. That's what I want to be able to do and um, have something that really does bless future generations if we're here that long or definitely the generation of youth right now that are about to be exposed to deceptions far greater than what we're seeing with this India moon landing stuff. But as I'm working on this and doing that, I I know there's a lot of parents going into homeschool with their children due to all the indoctrination. And you see stuff like this. This is what I saw when I was scrolling through 
on Facebook the other day trying to get to our page. And it's the homeschool programs that are out there. And they are full of space propaganda. My wife's finding it too. We're reading a book today that's from a creation-centered place. And it's joking about, you know, not really joking, but mentioning how the ancestors, the people, you know, the ancients believed in a flat earth and they were sailing out in the water and they used to think that and now we don't. It's it's that type of content. No matter where you go in the creation curriculum, it seems to be a big deal. And the reason they do that is because it's a part of the standards. And so as an educator, they will really go after you if you don't stick to the standards. So someone like me teaching the way I do, I have to be really sneaky. And with this new approach with the homeschool, I don't have to be sneaky, but I am going to use a modified version of current standards that I'm calling creation standards for a reason. And that's because our children that are homeschooled have to take tests, at least in my state anyways, that go along with those standards. And so I want it to be standards that make them put the traditional standards to the test and show them the proof of the Father's true creation standards, the ones that he has in the Bible that show us what we live on and who we are. And so we put things to the test. That's my goal anyway. And so that's been going on. But this whole Indian thing just reminded me of how essential it is that we wake this generation of youth up, even the ones that aren't in our country, ones that are somewhere far away that we feel like are just too far away for us to get to. These people are reachable. Find ways to do so. I know it's not easy, especially with the language barriers and stuff, but if you can really work things out and put stuff there, I know there's a lot of people that, especially the people that are already there, it's a little more dangerous. I think it's, you know, you come into Christianity over there, you get banned or, you know, just kicked out of the house. I know someone who has a really good testimony where that happened to them. They were trying to, you know, dabble in Christianity secretly and get rid of their idols. And before you knew it, they were just getting excommunicated. And now they're here in the U.S. Awesome person that is just extremely humble and, you know, a truth seeker. And I'm, I'm so blessed that we have somebody like that because they would still be there under these deceptions. So the Father can do far greater things than these lying signs and wonders. Yes, they're laughable, but they're still doing damage. And so uh, we got to humble ourselves and really find ways to, to reach these people. So thank you guys for those of you who have just been sharing a lot of the things we're putting out there. It's making a difference. I'm hearing a lot of testimonies, even in spite of the massive amounts of censorship we have. It's a blessing to see. Other platforms I've had to use have actually made it much further than YouTube. YouTube is kind of just almost dead in the water now. And, and I still look at it as our main platform, even though it gets a fraction of the views we get on other platforms. This feels like home. It feels like my family's here. I've gotten kind of attached to all of you that come around and help encourage us and share your wisdom. So thank you for that. It's been quite the fun journey. And I feel like the craziness is about to happen. I mean, it's already been happening, but it's about to get worse. So we need to really band together and keep up. And like that verse said, keep on the full armor or the whole armor of God, that we may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. So, got to do everything. Th those powers of darkness are waiting for us to lower our shields, and I've seen so many brothers and sisters out there walking right, and then that shield drops for just a moment, and man, it's damaging. You know, uh, we can't do anything on our own. So, always, always stay humble. Those are the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that's just what I wanted to share with you guys, some insight and what we need to be doing, who these powers of darkness are. Makes a lot more sense when you break it down word for word. But uh, I'll be back real soon, hopefully with some live videos, some people that I want to bring on uh, really soon and have some fun and uh, also get some work done on the homeschool stuff because I'm falling behind on that. I really want to get several things out there to help parents out. So if you want to get on our email list, the email that we have is in the description. It's the creation standard at gmail.com. So send us an email. We'll add you to the list. We have a website now that's still in the works, and you can explore that and look at some of the things we have. It's like a rough draft of what we're going to have next year. Hopefully it'll be a lot more fancy after having all this year to work on it. But uh, thank you guys for your support again. You guys are awesome. Couldn't do it without you. Our patrons, it's humbling. Uh, the amount of support you guys have given us and helped us 
grow the way we have and do the things we do. And so um, appreciate it, and we will see you around real soon.